Hi there guys, the old fart back again. Uh, this time we're back in the shop. The temperatures are slightly improving and uh, what's today? 18th, Jan uh, February 18th. And uh, there's a promise tomorrow, Friday, of some improvement in temperature and Saturday is going to be, well, hang on, it's going to be in the 50s. <laughs> well, nearly. So it's uh, feasible to get out here. I've just put some heat in with the space heater. I'm so impatient to get on with this uh, quill stop, which I hope will work out. Um, as a reminder, that's the uh, drawing of approximately what we're aiming for. But there are a few couple of things that will be finally sorted out for accuracy when we get to it. I'll explain that when we get there. So what, there's my beaten up old rotary table which I extended. Uh, it's got one or two tight spots but it basically works. I've got a piece of inch which I, well no actually that's 30 mil. I've machined it to be a pretty tight fit in the centre and there's only about, I don't know, about an eighth or so, so it's very difficult to get this absolutely upright. In fact, I'll probably bring the uh, column down in a minute and get this a bit lower but because any slight deflection here will be throwing me out. I've got it more or less set, but I'll bring you in a bit closer and um, we'll make a start on setting up. This is all I'm doing today, end of end of day. So, there's our blank, which is marked out, and I've got a centre pop in the middle, and I think I'm probably going to follow Randy Richards' idea, which I had sort of chickened out of initially, but I think it's the best way to go. So we'll clamp this on some parallels, and machine out the main circle here, so we'll probably take a plunge mill and then go around repeatedly to get the depth. And then if we change the position on the x-axis, I can do the outside contours, I think, at least most of it. And then these straight bits at, straight bits at the end, I'll use my little three-wheel bandsaw, which is a bit rinky-dink but I've got a new blade in it, which I think will do the job. So let me come in a bit closer. Right, you may, I don't know whether you can see much. I'll come in a bit closer, but I pretty much got it locked down. I've taken a little bit of light off so that you can possibly see the dial. Um, I'm within, at the moment, probably a tenth, couple of tenths, which is pretty much okay. Um, this is not mega, mega critical, but I want it to be fairly good. And having got this centered, I've got to set up the uh, aluminum plate. Let's come in a smidge closer. Right, I think you can see that now. Uh, each graduation is uh, five tenths and I say I've only got a deflection of a tenth or two, so that's, that's plenty accurate enough for this job. And the next thing is to set up the uh, aluminum plate. Well, this is a little bit tricky. The uh, rotary table isn't really big enough. It's only got four T-slots, which I suppose isn't unusual, but planning to do the centre removal and the outer radius before I take off the rest of the material. It sort of potentially helps with regards to clamping but I've only really got two clamp or, um, options here. Now I've taken those up as much as I can so everything's, everything's pretty solid. And uh, again, I don't know whether you'll see the dial. Oh, 
I've got about, I'm just trying to see, oh, i got about three or four tenths, about the best I can get at the moment. So I'm going to go with that as long as I can finish up with the uh, diameter I want. And I'll try and produce this slightly undersized initially and then bring it out to the size I want. So we're going to try that. It still hasn't warmed up enough. So I'm sneaking out here just for a little while. And um, tomorrow is supposed to be the mild day, so I'm hoping I can crack on with this and uh, make some progress. Well, I made a start on here and uh, a few points to mention. I'm using a 5 16 carbide, I'm running that at about 2000. Um, I'm only taking a hundred thou cut this time round, basically to see how well it copes. And the fact that my clamping system is not as good as I would like. So I've got to keep the uh, feed fairly careful and see how we do on this first run. I mean it's nine, <laughs> nine inches round there, it's a long long tedious cut. I might when I finish this one come back over here by the way I've got a plunge that's my starting point. Um, having gone all the way round I might come back in here and see if I can take a complete cut which is rather a lot although if I'm going slow I may be okay. The outside profile that's going to be tricky because I've only got clamping in two places. Um, I could have used a smaller cutter but this again is compromise. Uh, I didn't want to use a small cutter and risk any breakage. So I say <laughs> just a, a compromise see how well it works out. And the rotary tables not the ideal it's not quite as smooth as I would like. Anyway, I'm going to take a bit more cut on here. I have to keep vacuuming up the chips. What a mess of chips. Basically I'm trepanning here. I've got no uh, suitable cutter that would have really done very good. Thus the milling operation. So I'm going to clean up some chips and then carry on. So chances are when I put this together I'll run that uh, speed it up because it is a pretty slow rate of progress on here. And we'll come back to you a bit later. Well after the first pass of a hundred I did try dropping right down and taking the rest but uh, it's a bit much for this little machine plus the uh, stresses on the rather poor mountings. So I'm going in increments of a hundred which is very tedious but uh, Hopefully it'll get me there. We're down to 200 right now. We're going to start on the third pass. Let's try another angle in case it works. Try this angle if I don't catch the camera.
Hmm. Quite a ways to go. And I'll see you in a bit. Right, that's got this chunk out. <coughs> and I went slightly undersized. You might actually see the uh, 100 thou increment marks on there. So I say I didn't dare go much more each time. So now, where um, I've just checked here, and this is not super critical, it just needs to be large enough, plus a little, so I can pinch it locked. Let's come back a bit. Let's see where we are on here. Oops, missed it. <laughs> okay, we've got about another about another twenty thou to take off the outside. Actually looking for a sixty on the diameter. So I'm taking a thirty thou finishing cut around the outside, which hopefully will suffice. Right, that's enough of that, a boy rigid. <laughs> Let's finish going round that and we'll check it again. Well clamping's still a bit of an issue on this because I don't trust just these two which I've had to move out slightly. But having got the centre clear, I've just put a couple of a couple of bolts in to nip the uh, inside bit of insurance really and I think it's going to be assuming I've got enough depth I'm not sure I might just about do it <laughs> I need shorter bolts don't I um, those are two inch I may have to get some one and a half so if I can what I want to do I might just about get half inch out of it I'm not sure. Oh, I can't get the ruler in. I might manage bring the mill down just a bit. Anyway, what I was going to say is I think uh, I'm probably going to take a plunge here and the same over here and then go in this direction because I don't want to climb mill. So I think that's what I'll do. I might see I got some shorter bolts. Or I might just have enough clearance. I'll check that out. Okay, well I've taken a plunge here. I'm leaving it uh, a little bit clear of this corner so we can have a slight fillet when I come to finish by hand. Um, I'm still restricting this to about a hundred thou on the cut. It makes it tedious, but I've got to do it, I think. Right, I must vacuum up this mess and I'm going to make sure that I stop soon enough here so I can again leave a space for a fillet. This is the last cut on uh, the first outside bit. Right, well, 
plenty of deburring to do. Now I'll do the other side. That's the end of the second side. Oh dear. Just made it to the bottom there, only just. <laughs> oh, you can't see the other bolt. I had to clear top of the uh, bolt. Anyway, that's that's basically got that shaping done. Next, we'll have to get onto the little bandsaw. Well, there's our piece roughed out. I'm mucky that side. So I've got to do cuts there and cuts there. So I'll try and get my rinky-dink little three-wheel bandsaw going on that. I've got a new blade in it. Now then, let's see. Oh, there you are, it fits. <laughs> It fits. I machined that out probably a thou or two over, hoping I could get it on. And it goes on. So the uh, pinch belt this end won't have to do much work. So let's see what we can do with the uh, bandsaw, which doesn't cut very straight I might add. Before I get back to the uh, bandsaw, I thought I'd just mention inspiration once again from Randy Richard. <laughs> he got one of these Panavice bases, uh, making a, using it for a small bullet vice for his uh, son, I believe. And I thought, well, that's damn useful because the vice I use for welding, which is very old and beat up, and probably won't get the luxury of copper jaws or anything. But uh, that's just a piece of inch I popped in there. But I've got to make a, a new base for this uh, welding vise. So I should probably deal with that as another little project. And the other thing, this came from New Zealand. It's uh, a belt drive kit for the Grizzly. Very nicely machined. I'm hoping it'll all go together all right. I quite forget who mentioned some time back somebody had actually uh, fitted this and said it was pretty straightforward. I don't really need to do it straight away but I've heard rumours that the uh, drive gears can fail and uh, I think this is a useful modification when I get round to it. Anyway, let's get back to cutting some aluminum. Uh, well, here's the Mickey Mouse band saw, which I've had for, gosh, 30 years probably. Despite getting the guide pads, which are sort of toughenol, paxilin type of thing, phenolic, I've got things set up as well as I can but it's very hard to keep a dead straight line. It always tends to want to go a bit one way. So I'm going to see a cut slightly outside my line and then tidy up later. Actually not too bad, not too bad, just got to guide very carefully. So anyway, <laughs> I won't bore you with all the other cuts, let me just get this finished. Alright, we're pretty much roughed out now. Uh, just nipped some corners off, 
So I shall finish some file work on there to get a fairly smooth radius. Um, the hole in here for the half inch bar, that's going to have to be set up very critically when I've made the bracket, which is going to be another stage. And then this end, we'll pop that in the mill, drill through, um, oh we've got to cut a slot, we'll do the slot last I think, thread one side, counterbore the other, so that's going to be the next stage, and I think we're probably almost done enough for a sort of part one, at least you made a start. No, I can't finish yet. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more. I'm going to get a tapping hole through here. Right. Now I want to try and do a counter bore, but the one I like to use is this this little fella. I don't know whether I've got enough room for the chuck. We'll have to see. Well I'm gonna try it. I want to make a fairly deep uh, counter bore actually. Although I could get myself an inch and a quarter bolt, but I think this one will do. I've got an inch. Let's check it out. Uh, I think I'm going to go a little bit more. I want that to be a little bit generous. Now we'll just go halfway through. I want to go down three quarter and a little bit. Right, <clears throat> I'm going to take that out and uh, put a thread in it, or oh, I'll put a little, little bit of counter um, chamfer on there before I take it out. Oh, well guys, <laughs> this is on the limit. This is on the damn limit. Uh, I've got a lot of slitting saws, not really quite what I wanted to use. This is a very coarse tooth. So I'm going to have to take it easy and uh, see how we go. But you might, you, it's almost out of frame. The top of the arch here is barely clearing the bottom of the quill. So I'm very stuck for space. But uh, I've advanced through here just beyond the back of the cut. So I'm going to see see how it works out. This is a case of here goes nothing.
Well, it seems to be coping. But as usual, <laughs> although I've got a half decent mandrel on an R8, never seem to find a slitting saw that runs absolutely dead on centre. You can hear it. Anyway, I'm going to carry on with that. I'll bring you in at the end if we succeed. <laughs> well, we're alright so far, so I'll give you the end of the cut, <laughs> which I'll probably speed up anyway. Well, there we are. That's uh, <laughs> it's actually worked out all right. I really wasn't sure. I'd prefer a finer tooth saw than that. Anyway, having decided to quit earlier and carried on with this, I've actually got the basis of this quill ring done. There's a lot of hand finishing to do, which I might get done soon, but uh, we'll, we'll give this uh, a part one because there's quite a bit more work to do. <laughs> Been quite a long sesh. Today is the uh, Saturday the 20th, which I think as I mentioned on a previous clip was destined to be warm. I think the outside temp was about 66 and I heard my dear buddy Paul next door starting his bike up and I thought, oh, I ought to get mine out, but I wanted to get on with this. So anyway, there we are. That's a wrap on what I hope will fit into part one. Um, in some ways, this is the most irksome a part of the whole job. So we've got the... Uh, quill ring as I'm calling it. So we got that done. Just a lot of hand finishing to do. Get these corners nicely cleaned up. I was quite pleased that it fitted on so the uh, you can see the spring I think. Yes you can. There's plenty of pinch there so we should be able to do her up pretty tight. Um, so the next stage is the uh, bracket to go on the side of the housing and the rod and the uh, locking block, shall we call it. So there's quite a bit yet to do. So no doubt part two will be equally laborious. <laughs> so anyway, um, here we go. It's just damn good to get back in the shop properly without having the nuts rattling or, <laughs> or the fingers going numb. Um, tomorrow is not as warm, but I think I might get out here. I'll try and do the finishing uh, on, on this uh, piece that we've done today and get that uh, basically cleaned up, ready to use. And look out some material for the other part and make a start whenever I can. In fact, the next week looks like absolute crap weather. Not necessarily super cold, but it's a load of junk coming up, which, which is not very good. So it may be a while before I get out to complete this project, after which I've got plenty else to do. Not short of a few things. Anyway, there we are, enough ramble. I always ramble on. Ridiculous, isn't it? So, I uh, hope you got this far, and... Uh, Thanks for watching guys, I'll hope to be back before too long. Bye for now.